This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. Now, in case you've somehow never gone through the shtick before in a sponsorship, using a VPN, you can reroute your internet traffic, making it appear as though you're in a different country, hiding your true IP address. This creates a barrier between your internet service provider and your personal information, allowing for extra anonymity online. But the main thing I like about Private Internet Access is that with it, you can gain access to region-restricted content. Plus, you can use it on an unlimited number of devices at the same time. Combined with their no-logs policy, ease of use, support for peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, and availability on all major operating systems, Private Internet Access is a super versatile VPN that gets the job done and more. So use my link in the description below to get an 83% discount on Private Internet Access. That's only $203 a month along with four extra months free. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's video and thank you for watching. One of the biggest challenges the Archie Sonic comic faced during its run was integrating its video game counterpart's cast and concepts into the comic's unique world and story. From its inception, Archie Sonic was designed to promote every aspect of the western branch of the franchise. However, with large gaps between major releases and Sega's notoriously hands-off approach to the series, the comic had gone in its own direction by the time Sonic Adventure 2 arrived. And so, the world of Mobius had far more important things to do than roll out the red and black carpet for Shadow the Hedgehog. As such, instead of a full-on adaptation, Archie released a quick SA2 setup issue dedicated to explaining how and why Sonic got captured by Gun, and that's about it, leaving Shadow's character up to the reader to discover by playing the game themselves. From there, Shadow simply didn't appear again for another two years of publishing time. So yeah, if it wasn't already obvious, as far as the Archie Sonic comic was concerned, Shadow the Hedgehog is a nobody. A character so inconsequential that even when he does finally appear, the details of his backstory are given zero fanfare. For example, a moment like Amy's speech is instead passed on to Sonic in a throwaway line by Shadow as he recalls that the blue blur showed him the light. Sometimes the details of Shadow's past are just forgotten entirely. I mean, though Shadow doesn't have amnesia like in the games, he certainly acts like it. One minute recalling that Robotnik is Gerald's grandson, the next acting like this information is a revelation. A moment, by the way, that totally alters his path going forward. It's a total mess. In fact, one of the few concrete details the comic does provide about Shadow completely contradicts his game counterpart that we're told he's supposed to be. And it's a pretty big one. Shadow's relationship with Maria. Or rather, his lack thereof. Because Maria, in Archie Sonic, is killed at best an hour after Shadow is even born. As far as Shadow is concerned, his first memories are running for his life and being led to a young girl who decided to make sure he was safe before herself, leading to her death. After that, Shadow's memories and personality were altered by Gerald into a desire for revenge for a lost friend he never even really knew. It would be a pretty emotional tale if the art wasn't so sketchy and the story wasn't so rushed. And yes, that brown-haired girl is Maria. Why the brown hair? Well, because we've already got a Maria back home! Her name is Hope, and she's related to Robotnik, lived most of her life in space, and of course has blonde hair and a kind heart. By the way, she was introduced before Maria as a separate character entirely. Oops. What this means then is that, unlike in SA2, Shadow doesn't make any promise to Maria, and he doesn't have a particularly deep bond with her to propel him in any one direction. As such, he's an aimless character, and not in a way that feels meaningful. So, despite eventually spending issue after issue with the character as each writer attempted to define who he was from here, I grew numb and frustrated. Forgot the question of who is Shadow the Hedgehog, the real question I began to ask was, why should I care about Shadow the Hedgehog? And yet, somehow, with the arrival of a new creative team and a new direction for the comic in general, the staff at Archie Comics managed to give Shadow that emotional core, a new promise, creating what has become my favorite version of the character. If there's one aspect of Shadow's personality that each Archie writer kept consistent, it's that despite his anger and temper, Shadow is a good person. So yeah, Shadow may single-mindedly hunt down Eggman, but the moment he's asked to help get someone to safety, he doesn't even hesitate. Shadow might be super aggressive, choosing to fight Sonic over the smallest insult, but as soon as the situation turns dire, he helps the blue blur escape without a second thought. And while Shadow may literally jump to death threats when something out of Sonic's control happens to get Hope caught in the crossfire, he immediately chooses to save Sonic's life when he's overwhelmed by the same army. And we end the issue on Sonic returning the sentiment, as instead of letting Shadow mope off into the sunset like he always does, Sonic calls out to him, Hey Faker, don't be a stranger. The new creative team ran with this idea, immediately using their first story to solidify these kinder traits. I mean, as Shadow claims that he's Sonic's enemy now working for Robotnik, He's shaking his hand with a genuine smile. And then he just outright fights the Doctor's goons because they're trying to hurt Sonic. This way, in the span of two issues, Shadow becomes much more endearing, even humbling himself by thanking Sonic for saving Hope. 
Combined with some strategic absences from Eggman's crueler plots, Shadow is able to retain his innocence while working for the Doctor. We're beginning to see that Shadow really has just been lashing out, that he's confused and lost, but that he's also willing to own up to and make up for his mistakes. He can open up. And that becomes even clearer when Shadow finally steals back his creator's diary from Eggman. However, the disc is damaged in the escape, so he asks for the Freedom Fighters help fixing it, claiming that they're the only ones he can trust. But the damage, combined with its age, means that their best bet is to go inside the disc itself to get the information. So the comic uses this as an opportunity to conjure up this dreamlike scenario, this data forming a digital world with living beings, ghosts of the past that can speak to and interact with Shadow. And it's here that this version of Gerald Robotnik reveals to Shadow that he was originally built to be a savior to protect planet Mobius. After all this time, issue after issue of searching, Shadow has his answer. He knows what his purpose is. However, the data also created someone else, a Maria. And as the disc breaks down and the world begins to disappear, it's clear that this chance encounter with the girl who saved him is going to be over before it's even properly begun. Despite learning his purpose, Shadow is still desperate, landing on a simple but heartbreaking line. I can't leave Maria again. I adore the presentation of this story. The way the panels slowly break down, their colors tearing away to reveal the white of the page. I love Shadow's facial expressions, which so effectively sell his desperation to hang on for just a moment longer. To just have a bit more time with his savior who he thought he had lost forever and who soon he truly will. This is his last chance, his only chance, and as he glances back one final time, you can feel that. But there's hope here too. As just as Maria began their conversation telling Shadow that they will never truly be apart so long as he holds her in his heart, we end on the new emotional core for Shadow's character, a new promise to Maria. Shadow, you have to go and protect everyone else now, and you'll always have me if I hold you in my heart. Goodbye, Maria. I am Shadow the Hedgehog. I am the union of ideals, dark and benign, but ultimately built in the name of love. I am the ultimate life form. I am the protector of Mobius. Run home to your master and tell him, this is who I am. This speech is every bit as heartfelt as it is cheesy, and I love it for that. Because Archie Shadow is a serious person, but not in the sense that he's stoic. Rather, he's earnest. He's honest. He's on the nose. He's a force of love who will protect the world because of Maria's words. Finally, he knows who he is and what he was made for. But what makes me adore Archie Shadow is how the comic refuses to let his identity be so cut and dry. Instead, at every opportunity, the comic challenges this triumphant moment of self-discovery. When Shadow is asked why he joined Gun, he explains that they provide him a safe place to rest when I need it, information so my time isn't wasted searching, access to the world with greater efficiency. Everything he does is in service of fulfilling his mission to protect the world the best he can. But of course, Shadow is also just a kind person and wants to do good on a personal level too, such as reaching out to other living weapons like himself, attempting to save them from the wrong path and the regret that comes with it. So when they fight, Shadow makes it clear that he wants Metal Sonic to know that he can go beyond his function and be free like him. However, Metal says something that stumps Shadow. Your mission is to protect Mobius. That is your function. I suppose, yes. This unit's function is to serve Dr. Robotnik. Both living weapons. Both operating to achieve their function. You are not different. You simply have an opposing function. This claim from Metal is pretty compelling, framing both his and Shadow's goals as equally robotic and unflinching. Shadow isn't free, he's just doing what he was told. And the interesting thing is that Metal's right. As when Shadow is sent on a mission to track down a soul emerald that's landed on Mobius, he's presented with a problem. He learns that Blaze's world needs the soul emeralds in order to survive, while Gun wants the emerald to better protect Mobius. So now Shadow's two sides are in conflict. Does he do good by helping someone right in front of him, or does he do good by following along with his programming? Blaze, I want to apologize. I know your world needs the soul emeralds. The oceans will boil, the islands will sink, and the sky will fall. I will admit I didn't know that, but my mission and the world come first. I will fight you without regret. Then why are you trying so hard to apologize? I love this so much. Watching his shadow's guilt battles his need to live up to his mission, to the purpose he searched for, and the little girl who believed he could achieve it. It transforms shadow's kindness into a job, a role, a math equation with no room for additional variables. It becomes even more interesting when you realize that shadow had an easier time choosing to help people when he worked for villains than when he, in a way, works for Maria for the mission. His desire to fulfill his function is now at odds with his inherent desire to just help others. But in the end, what makes this enjoyable instead of frustrating is how obvious it is that Shadow is going to do the right thing. I feel just like Amy here, smirking at the fact that I know Shadow is too good of a guy to let his function stop him from doing what's right. I simply want to see this incredibly earnest guy realize that he can help 
everyone. In that way, this moment is rather understated, but I really like that, because I never would have believed Shadow would actually let a world die, but I definitely believe that he might need to take a step back and assess his priorities. As such, his decision isn't the climax of this arc or anything so dramatic. No, instead of making the right decision just in the nick of time, Amy gives him an ultimatum at the start of the battle, and Shadow commits to it to the very end, as he confidently states, the safety of a world outweighs our mission. I don't just walk away from a gem. You will let this go, or I will make you. In this way, Shadow, because of his own morals, chooses to go beyond his mission and his purpose. To not just protect one world, but to protect all worlds. However, all of this internal conflict stems from one core issue that you might have noticed by now, and that's how consistently Shadow dehumanizes himself, even actively identifying as a living weapon. From the very beginning, Shadow has prioritized the correct way to be, not what he wants to be. He's a tool, and to Shadow, a tool shouldn't spend its time enjoying anything until the world is completely safe, and a tool should definitely be able to live up to its name. Shadow is the ultimate life form, and no version of the character seems to take that to heart more than Archie's. In Shadow's own words, being the ultimate life form means that he was designed to be perfect. He's not meant to fail to save others or fail at anything, really. And that view of himself just doesn't mix with the world of Mobius. For one, this is a place where demigods like Shadow are just out here roaming around. A world where multiple characters have control over chaos energy and can easily go toe to toe with him in a fight or outright defeat him at his most powerful. A world where, when Shadow discovers he has powers he didn't know of or how to control, Knuckles is right there to go, hey buddy, first time? Because as it turns out, Archie Knuckles already has the title of ultimate bioengineered weapon destined to save the world. And as for saving the day from Eggman, well, Shadow and Gun are so aware that Sonic and his friends will take care of things that they mostly just provide support, rather than acting as the main offensive. There's other things they can do to keep the world safe, while the real protectors of Mobius do their thing, which leaves a lot of Shadow's stories to take place in the aftermath of the main villain's defeat. Shadow simply isn't all that special in Archie. This one, combined with all of this pressure he places on himself, leads to Shadow making poor choices, like taking missions alone out of an intense desperation to prove that, if push comes to shove, he can fight on his own, independent of any help. Backup is meant to be a tool in Shadow's arsenal he can use to win, not teammates he needs to rely on to succeed in the first place. It's a minor distinction, but one clearly driven by Shadow's desire to prove himself. And yet, the comic never gives Shadow that perfect win. There's always something stronger than him, there's always something he didn't see coming, and there's always the simple fact that, alone, Shadow isn't good enough. He's just one person, and no matter how hard he pushes himself, no matter how much he refuses to relax or rest, nothing will change that fact. And it's not a fact he's readily willing to accept. Which begs the question, how can Shadow grow into a proper protector if he already believes he is one? That he must be one because he was created to be that from the outset. All of this is to say that Archie's shadow is often defined by his weakness, but it's only through that weakness that sometimes the connections he's made are able to crack through this stubborn hedgehog's prickly quills. And who better for that job than a fellow hog? Sonic and Shadow's relationship is incredibly charming. Their brotherly back and forths, the way that, without a word, they have each other's backs, and the respect that underlines their banter. It makes it clear that these two guys, regardless of any disagreements or differences in personality, have grown to care for each other. And that's really the key word here grow, and that growth is wonderfully illustrated in this great issue that encapsulates their relationship, as we go from the past to present again and again, using this as an opportunity to show how much closer Shadow has grown to Sonic. Where before Shadow was fighting Sonic so that a dangerous cannon could fire, now he works with Sonic to stop one. And where before they eventually worked together but seemingly at the cost of Shadow's life, now their improved teamwork and friendship allows for this. A hand to catch him when he falls. My, my, my. What? Look how far your relationship has come. Hm. He has my respect. That's all. Of course, far too scandalous for you two to be friends. This all probably doesn't seem like the Shadow you know from the games, but I hope you can see now why I love Archie's Shadow. I love Shadow because he's earnest and kind, reaching out to even enemies to help them. I love Shadow because he's grown so much, from an aimless, angry person to someone who enjoys the company of his rival. I love Shadow because he's a dork who makes incredibly silly faces when he's mad or gets offended when he sees evil Sonic wearing a crown and so decides to take time out of his day to beat him up for it. I love that Shadow's got this stupid motorcycle he likes and that he even paints and maintains it himself. And I love Shadow because no matter how hard he wants to be that emotionless living weapon focused only on duty and diligence, he can't help but care for and comfort others. Which leads to this scene. The Shadow sits here crushed by another of his many failures and refuses to be encouraged by his companions. By hope. Yeah, hope is back. 
using her genius to help Gun keep the world safe. Her intrinsic parallel to Maria is obvious, and at one point Shadow even believed her to be Maria, but the way the comic connects these two goes far beyond surface level similarities. Instead, the real heart of hope is how she embodies her name. Not as a new Maria, but someone who, without even knowing it, encourages Shadow to go beyond Maria. See, Hope is worried about Shadow, and so to help him feel less lonely, she decides to open up about herself by telling Shadow how she's failed in the past, which starts to get to her. But Shadow, as usual, can't help but encourage this little girl. Can't help but tell her that the mistakes of her past, her fault or otherwise, don't have to define her, don't have to loom over her in a fog of uncertainty. And so, in return, she reminds Shadow that his failures don't make him a failure either. If anything, those losses will only strengthen him for future success as he learns and grows, because it's okay to learn and grow. Where Maria's belief in Shadow led him to create an extreme and unhealthy standard for himself as the world's perfect protector, Hope's belief gives Shadow a realistic view of himself and the situation he's in. The thing that ultimately allows him to be vulnerable, to just be. As such, now we can see Maria not as a specter that hangs over his every action, but as an old friend who smiles down upon him, as she fades away to reveal the light ahead. Yes, Shadow will be strong for the sake of others, just as he's always been, but in turn, he can trust that they'll be strong for him too, because Shadow can finally be free, knowing that even the ultimate life form is no more special than a little girl. You know, when we first met, I thought you were scary. But now I know you're just as lost as I am in this big, crazy world. But we'll look out for each other, right? I'll keep inventing stuff, and you keep busting bad guys. We'll be okay in the end, right?